All right, welcome back. Today's video is ionization energies. The first and most natural place to start is with the definition of ionization energy. It's the amount of energy required to remove one electron from each atom in one mole of gaseous atoms to form one mole of gaseous ions. And that is two marks for free on your A-level. It's asked practically every year and it was asked this year in 2022. You need to be able to represent this definition as an equation and it's as simple as this. Oxygen gas becomes oxygen gas with a one plus charge plus E minus. Obviously this oxygen can be anything. That is the ionization energy of oxygen. Key pointers are the gas phase must be included otherwise it's incorrect because in the definition you've got gas and gas and the one mole and one mole part of that definition is also crucial. Pretty much all of that is crucial. If you replicate that word for word, you get two marks easy. Up to this point, I've been referring to this as just ionization energy, but it's actually first ionization energy. It's the amount of energy required to remove the first electron. These two equations that I've just written down are the successive ionization energies. This is the second and this is the third ionization energy. You'll be able to write the definitions for these two right here the same as the one above, but instead of atom to form ions, it's one plus ions to form two plus ions or two plus ions to form three plus ions. That's your definitions and successive ionization energy idea out of the way. As soon as you deal with the first and second and third and fourth, I mean, obviously that just applies onwards. It's time to deal with something that's much more important and it kind of goes very far beyond what we've just done. The factors that affect ionization energy. There's three factors that affect ionization energy. Shielding, nuclear charge, and distance from the nucleus. The best way to do this is to just get a traditional Lewis structure of an atom. This will work for the vast majority of what I'm trying to explain here, but we will go into more detail after this. Let's deal with shielding. When you ionize an atom, the electron that comes off is the one furthest away. So in this case, it's the sole electron in the outer energy level on potassium. Shielding, that's the word used to describe the stuff in the way of this electron and the nucleus. Electrons are negative. The nucleus in the middle is positively charged. The only thing stopping this electron being ripped away is the attraction between the positive and the negative. The stuff in the way, all of these electrons, obviously in real life, they're moving. That's not really the concern. You can picture it like this. That is what the shielding means. If you're at a lower principal energy level, there's less shielding and therefore a greater ionization energy. So as shielding goes up, ionization energy goes down. Potassium is easier to ionize than sodium because for one reason, there is a lot more shielding. Nuclear charge, that's the second factor that affects ionization energy. And it is simply how many protons are there in the middle. The more, the stronger the attraction between this and this, and therefore the higher ionization energy. The nuclear charge goes up, ionization energy goes up with it. Finally, we're gonna look at distance from the nucleus. And that is exactly what it sounds like. How far are you away? from the middle. As the distance increases, the ionization energy decreases. This is because as distance increases, attraction between positive and negative entities decreases too. This here is what you need to take away from what I've just said. Oftentimes in exams, you ask questions to compare two atoms that you might not have ever compared before, but you can just apply one, two, and three and come out with a three or four mark answer easily. This graph shows the successive ionization energies of potassium. The reason I'm showing you this is to bring light to the differences in ionization energy as you get closer to the nucleus. What I'm gonna do as well is write out the A-level representation of the electron configuration we learned in the last video. If you're wondering why it is 4s1 and not 3d1, it's because 4s is a slightly lower energy level than 3d. That is the energy it requires to remove the first electron, which is 4s. When we move to 3p6, this is the 3p6 electron, if you will. There are the changes going on at these points on the graph, 4s1 to 3p6, 3p6 to 3p5. The difference between the ionization energies here is significantly less than the jump from here to here. That's because of the change in principal energy level. Whenever the number in front changes, the change in ionization energy is huge. These next eight, it's still the three. This gap is three to two. And this gap here is two to one. The big gaps are changes in principal energy level. The final thing really for this video before we maybe look at an exam question or two is the trends that they want you to know. And that is down a group and across a period. The first thing we're gonna do is deal with down a group. The group they want us to look at is group two. 
These rules apply for all of the main groups though. As a matter of fact, instead of stating the trends, we're gonna figure out what happens. As we go down a group, every single time, the energy level amount increases by one. So, shielding goes up. Nuclear charge, that does go up, yes. But distance also increases as well. The fact that the shielding and distance increases so much every time you go down, the nuclear charge increase is negligible. Therefore, ionization energy goes down, down a group. I also want you to know about what happens across period three or across any period. Again, let's look at what happens to the three factors that affect ionization energy. Shielding stays the exact same. Across the period, they all have the same amount of energy levels, so there's no change. Charge increases by one every time, relative charge that is. The distance may increase slightly as you go across, however, it stays about the same. Therefore, across a period, ionization energy increases. Here we've got the first ionization energies of the period three elements. And whilst the trend is definitely a general increase across the period, there are two dips that I didn't mention before. Here's the first and here's the second. Both of these can be explained through the magical powers of science. So first, let's have a look at magnesium and aluminium. Here we have the full electron configuration of both aluminium and magnesium in the respective colors. You can see that there is nothing in the 3p orbital of magnesium, yet there is in the 3p orbital of aluminium. If we look at this dip, you can see it's between these two and that is simply down to the fact that aluminium's furthest out electron is in the 3p suborbital. That is slightly further away from the nucleus than the 3s of magnesium. That distance makes more of a difference than the increased nuclear charge. There's one more dip, which is here between phosphorus and sulfur, and it can again be explained with electron configurations. If we take a look at the 3p orbitals of both phosphorus and sulfur, not p and s as in the suborbitals, phosphorus will have the following, three electrons, each of them in their own orbital. Sulfur has four. There is a single double up in an orbital inside the 3p sub level, which leads to spin repulsion. Take the words as it is and don't look into it any further. It's really beyond the pay grade of any A-level chemist why this happens. However, they want you to know and be able to explain the graph. In terms of content, that is absolutely everything you need to know about ionization energies at this stage. They come back in thermodynamics in the second year. However, for now, that is all. And I thank you for watching as always. And we'll see you later. Get in the comments if you need any help and check the website for a more neatly indexed version of the YouTube channel and this video and everything else in note form. Thank you for watching. Subscribe.